I can feel it coming together. The finish line is near. Remember, I'm not trying to renovate the space. And you know, it's not realistic to think every time you need to clean up, you've got to paint, put new flooring in or anything like that. You really can make the most of what you've got with a few good storage solutions. So these are exactly the size of a fat quarter uh, bundle. And again, it sort of acts as a bookend. Now the fat quarters are a bit of a, well, they were like sort of a nightmare. They're so gorgeous when they're all bundled up. But as soon as you take one out, it's like, now what? You know, you don't want to unfold it but it never goes back the way it was. Basically those fat quarter bookshelves that helps you keep them folded, put them in the bookshelf, they don't have to have the tie around them, and then you just put that bookend and it keeps them all standing up. So this is perfect for charm squares. This I love for charm squares. This is good. Put them here and then put some bolts. This could be the fat quarter zone. You have to keep them folded like they were folded before. <laughs> All right, I got my work cut out for me. I'll just sit and fold. Here's the thing, if you love fabric, you're gonna not mind sitting and folding all this. Okay, so this is how I'm folding the fat quarters, laying it out long ways, folding it in half, in half again, and then meeting in the middle and then folding it together that I can then put on the shelf. Now you can actually see what you have. At the very, very least, I'm enjoying looking at it. Even if it doesn't get used, it's now displayed in a way that's like practical, but also Pinterest, which I think is nice. Okay, so these are these little ink dividers for those small little ink cube pads. I'm gonna fill these up. One of the worst offenders I had of one-time storage was for my ink cubes and the ink pads. I had so many of these kind of storage things that were just piled up. Look, and they fit so perfect. What I did was get the ink cube dividers and because we ordered a system that is for crafters and the stuff they know they have, um, it fits the ink cubes perfectly because that's what it was made for. It's not made for makeup. It's not made for like anything else. Honestly, pulling those drawers out is so satisfying. It's a whole new joy we found just opening the drawers. It's like just two and a half drawers here, like literally emptied this. <laughs> You know, that's that's incredible because like that's a lot of wall space and it's very little space here. And these dividers, they really are like keeping everything divided and nice. This is a drawer full of embossing powder. <laughs> Yay. I like that this system allows for cohesion between the different kinds of crafts. So I can have my storage look the same, even though this is actually storing my fabric and my thread, and this is actually storing um, you know, my markers or my paints and paper, but still have it look like a big cohesive unit. And then I can do more fine tuning inside the drawer with all kinds of adapters that are gonna allow me to specify what it is I wanna store. So I ordered these thread grids in uh, the size for the small spools of thread and the large spools. And basically we're just making a grid. So you could put this in any 12 by 12 drawer even if it was larger to help lay your threads out flat. And then same deal, thread grid for the smaller 100 meter spools of thread. And this one fits perfectly in the one inch drawers. Delegate, delegate. So the paper trays were like, when I was ordering them, a little bit of like, do we really need this many paper trays? Oh my gosh, we could have ordered double. So this is a mess and kind of overflowing. So I'm gonna transfer all of the colored papers um, to the new paper trays 
in like rainbow order. And I think maybe I'll save this for paper pads. I actually think down is gonna be better because I may end up with like different kinds of red and maybe I want all red to be up here. Once you start organizing the paper, you're like, okay, I definitely wanna put this in a rainbow order and there's so many different shades of pink and red. I like that I didn't label the actual paper trays with their colors, but instead kept with like our room theme. Um, that way when I wanna build on them, I can literally just, you know, keep the rainbow inside the tray going. So this is an amazing amount of like small storage, like mind blowing. And it doesn't jet that far out from the wall, which is nice. I don't love the white. No. When we set up all the shelves and we saw that sea of white drawers, it did not speak to our creative side. I also don't think I have the stomach to spray paint all of this. Like, A, it's gonna take way too much paint. And it will scratch up easily. And I do think that over time, because paint doesn't stick well to plastic, over 200, that's too many drawers to spray paint. And even if I only had five drawers, I also wasn't sold that spray painting was a long-term solution for keeping these looking good. I think the answer is vinyl. I think we could design the exact front. We spent a long time thinking about how can we decorate the front. And I'm not sure why it took me so long to be like, duh, vinyl. <laughs> and then maybe we could get fancy and change up the colors or maybe we could put like a, you know, um, rolling design on it or something like that. Ombre look. Yeah, yeah, hmm. All right, I'm gonna give this some thought. From the beginning, we kind of knew we wanted this like kind of painted brush stroke. We didn't know how it would turn out and we didn't want it to just be like ombre because that didn't exist in vinyl colors. So that led us to kind of go like, well, what do we do then to make it look good? So we thought, okay, how about we do like a brush stroke or where it kind of just, you know, takes, has a bit of movement. Uh, we're almost done. It's looking good. I'm just putting on this few last jaggedy pieces here. Honestly, tomorrow, I think it's turning out so good. So what we did was on the Cricut, we cut the exact template out, but to just leave it as the exact template just made us look like the drawers were all in the wrong spots because some were blue and some were pink and some were white. Um, by putting these little half sheets with just um, cutting with the scissors um, allowed us to kind of create this sort of like painted, movement. yeah, the movement. Can you see? So that it all sort of starts to flow together. Otherwise it was just colored drawers. And so this was our kind of way of bringing it all together. <laughs> we kind of felt like creative geniuses after that. Now that we have created this, go to our website and we'll make this a uh, free download so that you guys, if you get the system and you want to, um, yeah, put whatever color you want on yours, you can do that. And then what's also cool is if you tire of it, goodbye, you just peel it off. Don't worry, I'm not going to. <laughs> We customized our own Cricut file, and basically we now have a template that allows you to cut out exactly the shape of the front of the drawer. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how we did it. So, Cricut Design Space, either whatever Cricut machine you have, you could do this on any machine, like even the little Joy you could do this on because, you know, you can cut 20 foot sections of the Joy. Let me just show you what we've done here. So you can see on the screen, we've basically just measured out the exact uh, width and length of each of our, the three inch, the two inch, and the one inch, plus the paper trays. When we went to make it, we just made like however many we needed of each one. So when you press make it, you're just gonna follow the settings for permanent vinyl. Just remember when you're doing a project like this, you wanna be cutting as many at once as possible. So we filled the sheet, um, like the 20, 12 by 24 sheet with like 
you know, as many as would fit on there. Uh, yeah, and then just peeled them off and stuck them on. I'm like so happy with how it turned out. Like to have a big custom, like just how we like unit. <laughs> you guys, why did it take so long for us to do this? So what I love is that all of the ink pads are fitting inside our Ikea units. That's why we ordered this and it's working perfectly. In fact, we ordered enough that we can bring it to our desk when we're working and there's still more inside. Definitely saves space totally save space. You want to maximize what you have. And that's really the idea of what we've been doing here. It's not necessarily renovating or painting or doing anything that, you know, requires you to change your actual space. It's making the most of the space that you have. And so with the rest of the Ikea um, Kallax units, we just put these great doors on so we could hide some of the mismatched uh, vinyl, the Cricut vinyl. We sorted them all into like iron-on and infusible ink. I love these new doors that they've got. You want it to all look cohesive and nice, or at least that's what we wanted. That's the idea that you come into your space and you feel like inspired, not necessarily more overwhelmed. And it doesn't look cluttered. Doesn't look cluttered. And speaking of organized, <sighs> I love the swoosh. It's meant to look sort of like brush stroke. Um, and I think it's turned out really, really great. Do you want to see inside some? All right, take a look at this. Oh, look at that with the tray of inks. Like, I mean, now I know you're asking, how are you going to know what's, high, what's inside each one of those drawers? There's, it's true. Although I'm finding I kind of remember where things are. Especially with the color on it. Yeah. It's, it's a like, pink drawer. It's imprinting. So we kind of have like paper, ink, paint. Then we kind of, we know ourselves have gotten into like the tool section. Yep. So we're getting into like where all like the hot glue guns are, the heat guns, tape. Oh, another drawer of tape runners. <laughs> can never have too many. And now we know we can just shop our own shelves. Yes. I don't actually have to buy a new tape runner every time I need tape. Am I going to suddenly become like a neat freak? Mm, no. But do I have systems now that help me and my disorganization? Yes. And that's the difference. Hello. <gasps> I mean, you guys. Doesn't this make you just never want to sew anything and just leave it in here nice and hot? <laughs> no, we are sewing. But I gotta say, there's a definite thrill that comes with choosing your thread. It's when like you just thing every day. Yeah, when you just come and say like, oh, which which shade should I choose? Yeah. And it's all nice and the dividers, brilliant, brilliant. So never again I'm gonna say, where's the scissors? They're in the scissor drawer. Remember, who needs a drawer of scissors? Everyone needs a drawer of scissors. You know, fabric scissors, paper scissors, thread snips. I couldn't be happier. The room feels bigger. All of our stuff has a place. There's not one thing that we're like, where does this go? Everything has a place. And I really feel like we've achieved our goal of finding a home for every single marker, fabric, thread, scissors, glue, tape, paper, it all has a place to live. Let's go over to the fabric department. <laughs> I mean, before there was like a little bit here and oh look, I'm looking at it from over here. I don't think I've stood here and just looked back. Dang, it's nice. You know, we didn't change much here, you know? It's just more effective. We put in like the little fat quarter bookshelves with, you know, kind of the bookends to keep everything upright. You can breathe in here now. And my absolute favorite thing is this little stack, the little fabric library. Like, let me just peruse and run my fingers. And what do I need for my project today? Making the maximum use of both sides of the shelf. This was such an aha moment, hey Tamara? Because it takes exactly the same amount of space to stand in front of a shelf as it does to walk in between the shelves. So we have double. We have double because space. we're putting the fabric now on both sides. 
this has been a game changer, right? Definitely. Yeah. I wish we thought of it sooner. I know. <laughs> it does make me feel yeah. bad for how we used to be. I know. <laughs> like, why did we let it get so bad? Do you think next year at this time? <laughs> <laughs> we better be. <laughs> we get, we, we got to check in 2023 with an actual real life look at the craft room. Yeah. Where are we? And did it work? Like we should do that in one year, come back and be like, put it in the calendar. Did it work? <laughs> I, I can't go back. I'm not going back. I am solemnly swearing to you right now that in one year I am going to go back and we are going to take a look and see how we're doing one year later, because I really think that we've come across an effective storage solution. I think the great craft room cleanup was a success. Yes. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Now we got to start crafting. Yeah. Let's get to work. <laughs> let's get, let's, let's make a mess. <laughs> so if I learned anything with the great craft room cleanup, well, I guess I learned, I don't need to really buy any more supplies. Not for a while. <laughs> I learned that everything needs a place. And if you've got stuff that's lying around, um, and you don't know where to put it, Maybe you need to donate it. Maybe you don't really need it. Or you have to come up with a system of where this is going to live. And it doesn't mean you have to renovate. It doesn't mean you have to paint or pull up floor. It means you have to organize. And if you can find a place for everything to live, you are gonna have a cleaner, happier, more creative space. And you're gonna feel like you can breathe in there. And I'm excited to get making again.